Will Smith is making a comeback. And I like to see it. I'll be honest. Here's why. I don't like when people do something and then they have to disappear forever. And in the old days, you that's kind of what happened because you didn't have social media. That is one of the pluses of social media. People can still control their own narrative to an extent, or they can at least not be totally silenced unless they get kicked off Twitter. Okay, fine. We, we get that. But um, it's just great to see guys like Will Smith or Alec Baldwin. People – now, it's, I'm not going to say it's great to see Kevin Spacey get back to work, but apparently he's back to work too. Um, so it's not great to see Kevin Spacey back to work. I want to be clear. But guys like Kevin Spacey, Will Smith, Alec Baldwin, in the old days – that was it. They had these big scandals. Like I didn't think we were going to see Alec Baldwin ever again, or like for several years, you know, maybe in a few years, he'd give an interview talking about how tough it's been. I didn't think we'd ever hear another episode of his podcast. Here's the thing, but he went right back to work, making movies and posting. He had a great summer in the Hamptons. He posted like every, every day from his backyard on Instagram. He did his little Instagram shows. Um, Kevin Spacey went back to work. Now Will Smith, after the slap, I mean, that was only earlier this year. He's back at it, showing his movie to the people. He's going around, and uh, he went to the Lakers to show them his new movie, Emancipation, where he plays uh, a slave who gets uh, emancipated. Okay, that's just a guess. I thought that was in the article. Never mind. But anyways, he's going and talking to people and showing him the movie. Um it's a great idea. It's great for him to be back on the scene. He slapped the guy. Yes, but it's really personal between him and Chris. He and Chris ultimately at this point need to work it out. We've all had our fun with it, but it's not affecting our lives anymore. And the Academy punished him. They kicked him out of there for 10 years. 10 years. I mean, he's still going out. I bet you know, what he could win an Oscar this year. I think he could still win an Oscar. He just can't show up. So I, I like that he's taking his own redemption arc. You know, same with Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's a guy who was supposed to vanish into Bolivian, as he said, 20 years ago. And instead, he's at a brilliant second act. So Will Smith was there at the Lakers facility. And uh, I don't normally talk sports on my show but i am a laker fan and uh, i want to take this opportunity to say a couple things about them first of all i'll make the same joke everyone else was making but i wish that will smith had slapped the general manager of the lakers rob palenka for not shipping russell westbrook out of here already lebron james you need to demand a trade i'm a fan of lebron i'm a fan of the lakers they're wasting your twilight years get out Demand a trade. Go somewhere else where you can win a title. It's not going to work here. Okay? That's my my sports thing. But for Will, by the way, I think a good idea for him to keep winning people over is, like, he should just go around to other celebrities. Like, he's going to the Lakers practice facility. He's showing the film to um, Floyd Mayweather and other celebs. He should do a thing where he goes around and shows up at other celebrities' houses and asks them to slap him. Kind of like how David Blaine used to show up at people's house and do magic tricks for them. I think that would really, if he just showed, hey, it's me, Will Smith. Uh, I want to show you my new movie and talk about it. But first, could you slap me in the face and put that out with a sense of humor about it? I think, I think he gets another nomination next year for Emancipation if he does that. And Chris Rock, by the way, Chris Rock fan, I like him, but, you know, I'm still annoyed that he hasn't really made a public statement on this. I know he's talked about it a little bit at his live shows, but come on. It's not that nobody even cares anymore. You should have sat down if you were going to do the sit down with, you know, Gail King or whoever handles the serious interviews these days with people. You should have done it already. It's almost like now you look bad. You're being too sensitive about it. You got slapped at the Oscars. Big deal. You're famous. Like when you're famous, like Will and Chris and Jada and everyone there, it's a different world. You know, it's like your own little fraternity and we're just watching it. So who, who the fuck cares? Come on out. Um, But yeah, Will is coming back. I think he's doing the right thing. 
I think it's time, and I'm happy to see him not disappearing. I'm happy he didn't stop working. Um, he didn't kill anybody. Hopefully, he's still verified on Twitter, and uh, I'm I'm just pleased. Okay, what else? What else is going on out there in this world? Uh, Donda Academy is closing. I'm kind of sick of talking about Kanye. I think we all are. Uh, You want to feel bad for the kids, but like, can you really feel bad for the kids? Like their parents sent them here. I don't know. I feel bad for the kids. Okay, here's what I feel bad about. I feel bad that the kids were sent there in the first place. You're not going to get a serious education at the Donda Academy. Like every idea Kanye has, it's like half thought out. And then he just try, and then it, it goes nowhere. Like this is not going to, this is not an accredited university. This is like going to ITT Tech. Donda Academy. It closed, it reopened. What are they telling the kids? Kids, the principal hates Jewish people. And because he expressed that, he has to shut the school down and you're all going home early today. I think they're better off. I think this is actually a good thing. Put those kids in a real school. I know they're probably the children of rich Calabasians and you know other famous people that Kanye knows. So they can go to whatever school. They're going to be homeschooled. They're going to be fine. But it's just look at that. That looks like they're working at the Foxconn factory. Everything with Kanye, I don't dig his whole homeless aesthetic that he keeps trying to push. You know, everyone wearing these like the all black clothes or the, the tan clothes. It's just like very bland. It's very North Korea. He's like a Kim Jong-un. I know he loves Hitler, but he's like a Kim Jong-un. It's strange. And look at the bare walls. Uh, is it supposed to look that shitty? Or is that the design? It, it, where is this, a warehouse in downtown LA? It looks like he's running a sweatshop in there. A sweatshop with rich, famous kids. So it's a good thing. Shut it down. I don't know, what's the lesson plan there? Okay, let's just do a quick little roundup before we wrap things up here. We're going to do a quick little roundup of the news. There's Harvey Levin, my old boss. Hey, dude. Anything else going on? Brady, I talked about that a bunch. You know, Tom Brady and Giselle have divorced, so she didn't take my advice about talking to Savannah James, LeBron James's wife, about how to deal with an all-time great athlete for a husband who's going on his 20th, or in her case, 23rd year in the league and how to make that work-life balance um, uh, a winning combination. She just left. And he feels stupid, of course, because the team sucks now and he's losing. So it's just a, a whole negative thing. Um, all right. Well, you know, there's no reason to drag this out if I don't have anything interesting to say. I don't want to waste your time. So I'm going to say thank you. I'm going to say good night and like, share, subscribe. And I will be back uh, maybe Monday, Halloween episode. Maybe Monday. Yeah. Anyways, this is the Dante Greco Show signing off. Goodbye. Dante Greco. Dante is a really smart guy. Ladies love Dante. I wanted hair. Look at that face. Dante Greco. Dante was me, yours truly. I'm going to come.